In this video, you will learn how to use Tinkerplots to simulate differences in two datasets and determine whether the differences between the groups will be repeated in a different sample. This graph shows the weight in pounds of 425 pumpkins. The farmer who grew them was testing whether using fertilizer to grow pumpkins produces heavier pumpkins than growing pumpkins without fertilizer. He fertilized about one-third of his crop with the new fertilizer and grew the other two-thirds without using fertilizer. The green pumpkins represent the fertilized pumpkins. Let's pull them up to form their own separate group. Did the fertilizer produce heavier pumpkins? If so, about how much heavier do the fertilized ones tend to be? Let's use the dividers and put them where we see the center clump of each group. We might also want to use a median to indicate the centers. The center clumps and the medians both tell the same story. The fertilized pumpkins do tend to be heavier. But how much heavier are they? Let's remove the dividers and add a ruler. Put the ends of the ruler at the two medians. Based on this, we could say that the fertilized pumpkins are about 4.9 pounds heavier than the unfertilized group. But we should ask ourselves, what if he did this again? Would he get the same results, or did this difference occur by chance? We can explore those questions in this case because our farmer was a virtual farmer, and these pumpkins were made with this Tinkerplot's pumpkin factory. We'll run it in a moment, but first let's look at the design of the factory. A pumpkin comes along and first gets a weight from this normal weight distribution. This distribution represents the pumpkin weights that the farmer has gotten in the past, ranging from 0 to 40, and peaking right here somewhere in the middle. The pumpkin then goes to this spinner, where it is randomly fertilized or not. If it isn't fertilized, it goes down here and gets a weight of 0 added to the weight it got originally, so its original weight doesn't change. If it is fertilized, it goes up to this mystery box and gets some additional growth. We don't know what that is currently. It's our job to guess it based on the data. Our best guess based on this data is that it might be something around 4.9 pounds. Click on Run and grow a new crop. We'll start slow just to watch a few get made. The first pumpkin is about 16.6 pounds and it is fertilized, so it goes up and gets some additional growth before it's plotted. The next pumpkin is about 12.2 pounds and is not fertilized, so it does not get any additional growth. The next pumpkin is about 23.5 pounds and is not fertilized. Now let's speed it up to quickly get to harvest time. We can see by comparing where the new medians are to the ruler lines that the medians are slightly different this time. Each time we run another sample, we get slightly different results. As we run more samples, what we'd really like to do is keep track of the difference between the two medians. So let's lock the ruler onto the medians by dragging the end line and then bringing the cursor to the median symbol. That purple circle tells me it's locked onto the median. Do the same with the other median. To keep track of this difference, click on the History button. The gray boxes that appear tell which numbers in the plot can be kept track of. Click on the difference value and a new case table appears showing that difference. Now, each time we run the sampler, that difference is added to this table of data. We might want to see what a graph of those look like. These are the differences we have so far. And let's go ahead and collect a few more. Using our dividers and looking at the differences we collected, a good guess might be that the mystery value is somewhere between 4.4 and 4.8. We can go and look at that once we've guessed what it is. 
First, we need to unlock the sampler, and then show contents to reveal what is in the box. In fact, it was 4.3. So our guess was a little off, but still close. What would our data have looked like if that value had been zero? Let's put zero in there and draw a few samples. Notice that the two medians are very close, although there is some difference. Let's run a few more samples under this condition. Again, those differences vary each time. But so far, we don't have any differences that are close to the ones we got when the difference was 4.3 so it is very unlikely that we would get the differences we got when the value was 4.3 if the value were 0. What if the value was negative 2? That's some bad fertilizer. Again, if we anticipate what should happen, the center of the distribution of fertilized pumpkins ought to be shifted about 2 pounds lower than the normal distribution. When we run this sampler, the differences do indeed clump around negative 2 as we expected.